Hi, hi, everyone. You are tuning in to the good, the bad, and the ugly. In this session, we are talking about OnlyFans, the content sharing platform where content creators can earn money directly from their viewers or subscribers. All right. So while the platform in itself is not strictly for the sharing of sexual or adult materials, uh, it has been heavily criticized right, for being a platform that promotes the sharing of uh, such materials. So in Singapore recently, we have a rather well-known uh, content creator on OnlyFans. And unfortunately, he was uh, brought to court uh, he, uh, for the sharing of uh, some obscene materials. All right. But that's just an example of, uh, you know, uh, of what some of the content creators may be doing. All right. The bigger question we want to ask is, is this, should OnlyFans be banned? Or should we actually allow it? All right. Should what do you guys think about it? Uh firstly, maybe we shall address this dumb point going around saying that like only fans nudes uh are not legal because it cannot be taxed. W what do you guys think? Is it because the government cannot tax it, that's why it's illegal or only fans should uh, so sorry, you're saying that nudes. Yeah, so I've been seeing like this um, sort of sentiment going around where they are saying that the government doesn't legalize OnlyFans or um, this kind of sex work where you are just selling your pictures online because there is no tax for them to profit from. What do you guys think of that? I think it's not so much about tax, but it's so much uh, more about protecting, uh, you know, pot potential uh, people who may be uh, taken advantage of, right? Yeah. I, I'm saying maybe, yeah, because there was the same thing that applies for vape. The reason why vape isn't allowed, one of the reasons is because they, they can't tax the juices and stuff. Yeah. And, and what you mentioned in terms of protecting and all those kind of things, you have to be of a certain age to join OnlyFans, right? I think I'm pretty sure 18 and above. Uh, so all those people in there signing up for it and content creators in OnlyFans are, are of mature age. So I don't think there's a need to protect anyone because they're all like mature adults and, and yeah, they could do whatever the whatever they want. Right. Okay. For me, I, I think the, the whole notion that uh, just because they cannot tax something, that's why it's illegal, is a bit um, weird. Because like, for example, there's a lot of things in Singapore that it's not taxed. Um, for example, crypto is not taxed. Winning the 40 is also not taxed. Giving charity donations in, in churches, more is also not taxed. Yeah, but wait. After you win the 40, can they tax you? No. Actually, yes. It's part of your income. No, it's counted as a windfall. So it's not like taxable like i was looking up this through the irs not irs the what's that uh, acra yeah the accounting organization in singapore mm. so if i win they can't tax me is that what you're saying no yeah because my friend just won 30k so i was like wait a minute but how much is the government so that's not take? one of the no yeah it's just classified under windfall and um as long as you have like Prove that, you know, see, uh, I mean, obviously the government won't come and chase you for it because when they look at your accounts, when they do your accounting and all that for all the tax that you proclaim to have, right? They will see under there that Singapore Post transact you this amount, you know, unless you take it right, cash, right. La, but then still that, I'm, I'm sure if you win 30,000, you probably take the photo and the proof for that. So you're safe la, in, in regards to tax wise. But also um, thinking that like the government is missing a lot of money on this or so is a bit weird because I went to see what Titus um, was like right so he's the top 0.1% in Asia or something like that I think probably even higher definitely the top 0.01% of earners in Singapore and he earns up to five digits a month right this is what he said by his own word lah, on some interviews that he given online so let's say like 20k consistently right he, and our CPF is around 20% aga aga okay um, for the UK itself they have about 100,000 only fan creators, which is about 0.15% of the population. So we say like 
our Singapore population, right, is Asian, is conservative. So we reduce that by one third. Like we, we say we're not so open-minded, right? Let's say we have 0.1% of our entire population, which is about 5,500 creators. Then because it works on a hierarchy where it's like a pyramid, the top earners earn the most, like they get paid more per subscriber kind of thing for by OnlyFans. Given that 5,000 of them are probably only earning 1,000 a month, which is already quite insane lah, because you have to be very dedicated posting frequently and at least be average looking. If not, no one will buy your stuff, right? And then the top 10% of those um, creators that we have here in Singapore earn about maybe 10K on average. So like the average kind of like titus, but obviously not on his level lah. So in a year that tallies up to about 12 million for um, the top 10% and then other 90% of only fan creators, right, would earn about 12 million. Oh, also in Texas. So the government basically loses out 24 million uh, SGD a year. By like trading economics.com, right? Our government earns $17.8 million in revenue a day. So I don't understand why it's this belief that the government is like sulking over what it can earn less um, because like it makes this amount in less than two days. Bruh. But then, so let's talk mm. about why, okay? If, if, if this um, sort of thinking is really debunked, right? So we talk about why. For me, it's about government mentality. They want that control and they want to sort of prevent any normalization of these kind of things. They feel that this will corrupt society. They feel that uh, this shouldn't be normalized. They feel that this will create a lot of um, sort of implications going forward. But I will let you guys take over and share your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. so only fans in itself is not banned, right? So what type... Ty- uh, so this content creator is uh, Titus, right? So what Titus is facing is uh, his sharing of uh, obscene materials, right? And that's un- classified under uh, sharing or distribution of uh, pornographic material. So I, I, I think he's being charged for that. Uh, not so much about, uh, you know, using OnlyFans in itself. So I saw some comments online, you know, what about the female uh, content creators? So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't use OnlyFans, but as far as I know, uh, I think uh, some of the more famous ones, uh, what they do on OnlyFans is they do show, uh, I guess some, I mean, they expose their body a lot, they show a lot of skin, uh, but not to the point where it's, uh, you know, uh, downright pornography. Uh, yeah, but I guess then, then that begs the question, you know, what's the, the difference between pornography and and uh whatever people, you know, some of the content creators are sharing on OnlyFans, I guess. So, I, I think both yeah. is banned in, in Singapore there. So what do you mean both? Like for pornography and OnlyFans shots, which are obscene, right? Like they show tits mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that. Yeah, right, those, but, those but, are yeah. totally banned. But I think to your, to your point about why is it like not fair, right? And about what about the girls and all that? I think, okay, one, I think that's like a wrong way to look at it because I think the whole law shouldn't be there in the first place. But let's, let's, entertain that thought for all. Lah. So um, bro, I think why the government is doing this or why the police is doing this, right, is because Titus is like the biggest fish to fry out there. He's making a lot of money. Probably in a few years, he can make millions of this like easily. Um, they want to make a, an example. Uh, they target the biggest one, then everyone else would, would be scared. And then I'll probably think, right, with more and more people sort of um, afraid now also, and then others seeing that, oh shit, you can just report them and this creator will be kind of like destroyed. I think there will be kind of human nature for some people who maybe have a friend that's doing it and they don't like that friend, right? To probably report them along the way. I think it's going to be sort of um, a butterfly effect or you're going to see more people snitch on others in, in the times to come. But I'm sure definitely you'll catch up to some girls. Huh? It's just that because Titus is, is earning the most right now and, and has the most clout online, huh? which is why probably that he's being targeted. Yeah, Don, any thoughts? Not really, man. I got to agree with Sim. Just maybe just to set an example, fry the biggest fish to bring out fear. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I think it goes back to, to what I'm trying to say. So actually, the, the, of the charge or the offense that he created is actually the obscene material in itself. Uh, is um, and I guess OnlyFans is much more public, 
compared to let's say a downright you know uh, porn website you know people upload their obscene materials on porn website uh, you know that's there's definitely like a hey look uh, you know people keep it the hush hush but only fans i think it's i think like what sim was saying uh, and, uh, you know it's uh, maybe perhaps uh, we, we don't want to normalize it so that's why the government is uh, targeting this uh, yeah the, the, this or maybe perhaps they are monitoring it I'm, I'm, who knows right uh, but by that, like that kind of logic um, should like we should ban prostitution also but prostitution is legalized here though. Yeah, no. So there's a difference between prostitution and you know the the, the distribution of uh, obscene materials. Yeah, but isn't prostitution worse? Like in terms of the effect, because you want to ban sharing of obscene materials because of the effects they cause on society. But isn't prostitution worse? I I don't know. Like for example, well, you maybe, you cannot yeah. catch AIDS from the photo, but you can catch AIDS from a prostitute. Yeah, that's true. You, you know what I mean? But again, so yeah, so the rationale. I mean, I I won't know why. Uh, why let's say for example the, the the distribution of pornography is illegal and prostitution is sort of a you know a close one eye and that kind of thing uh yeah so i I, th- I think prostitution sort of uh helps or moderates rape cases you know true. so guys don't go out raping true. people true but you so can they- say that about only fans as well though, right how can you explain well, one one could argue that it actually you know, encourages it, you know. Encourages rape. I mean, encourage people to get sexually aroused or whatever. I mean, one could argue. I'm not saying uh, that's my view. I'm just saying I can imagine some people would argue that. Right. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. Why? Why? I think, okay, so what has, uh, so there has been research or studies being done at least. Uh, so a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call that? The sexual assault uh, offenders right so they all start with uh, of course this doesn't happen overnight right but they do have a habit of uh, watching pornographic material right and then it escalates so pornography is not enough for them so they need more stimulation right and then it goes on to, to other sexual offenses now. Uh, but yeah okay but if let's say they didn't have porn or if they didn't have prostitutes what would their sexual assault be like could it be worse because that's the street. Like, yeah, correct. That's the gateway that they take. So if they don't have pornography, then they won't be triggered in the first place, right? So they won't be aroused. Right? So the reason why people yeah, are exposed yeah, to it in the first place, they may be curious and things like that. I don't really think it's true though because, okay, mm. when, um, when we look at like sexual predators, right? Um, mm. Or like, um, they actually found that there's a very, very strong correlation of like having very, very um, high sex drive Basically, it's a hormonal thing, right? So whether they Correct. are exposed to porn or not, they are naturally very horny. And it gets to the point where they have to let out that urge on someone. You know what I mean? So like, um, because our genes and our biology is so complex, right? There are certain genes that turns on and off at certain times. Like, for example, um, I know one third of transgenders, right, actually stem from having like childhood trauma. So that childhood mm. trauma actually turns certain genes on their brains and then they start to act like a different sex or a different gender. Uh, girl to guy, guy to girl, for example. So it could be that uh, these kind of events that actually trigger them and then this is who, who they become. So they cannot do anything to cure it. Therapy doesn't work. So what they did find, right? Like, for example, um, they, like, pe- like pedophilia, f- for example, like people who touch kids, right? They actually mm. uh, found that most pedophiles, right, were actually kids that were touched themselves. So that was like quite of a mind blown, right? And then obviously these pedophiles don't want to touch a kid. Um, they are, they know by society standards it's wrong. They just cannot control this urge. So what they um they tried everything. They tried harsh punishments. Didn't work. They still reoffend. They say this is me. This is me as a person. I I try my best. Doesn't work. They tried counseling, CBT. Cognitive therapy, all didn't work. Then they try even more extreme measures. They show them ethical child porn, which means like, let's say I'm 18 years old, okay, but I have very boyish look. I look like Tom Holland. I look like um, Spider-Man, right? So I can pass off as like a 15-year-old, 16-year-old. Um, I then feel myself 
having sex with a very old lady, okay? And then it looks like pedophilia porn, okay? And then the genders can reverse, like, they'll film girls that who look very young, but actually they are of age, right? So it becomes ethical in that sense. They are not filming child porn. Then they will show these kind of categories to the uh, pedophiles. And then they actually found that it reduced their rates of acting on actual kids. So the whole notion that uh, if you legalize porn or whatever, right, then it will lead to, to um, higher rape and all that. It, it, it doesn't really add up, especially if you look at places in India, for example, where gang rapes are, are, are crazy high and porn is also not legal. But um, yeah, so as I'm saying, right, like Singapore has long legalized prostitution, even like during 1930s and more so during the World War, the Second World War, where the Japanese came and then they set up brothels here so that their soldiers can just fuck and release their aggression, right? But if we look at the stats from uh, 1985, because I also see like people making the arguments, you know, saying, oh, uh, OnlyFans, prostitution, all, all this kind of shit will kind of raise up the HIV and AIDS and all that, like, right? But if you look at the stats, like, the number from um, two went up to 8,879. So um, obviously in 1985, the, the number two is not literally number two. La. Like there weren't just two AIDS victim or two HIV victim. La. But uh, it was because there's a lot of process and errors in kind of measuring this kind of thing. And who want to step forward? Who, who wants to be shamed and tell the government that they got AIDS, right? But so over time, uh, where we destigma these kind of um, stereotypes, when we kind of like in increase our measuring skills, our surveying skills, when we talk to people and sort of like pry them out better as researchers, in the lab also we get better at testing for HIV, syphilis, AIDS kind of thing, right? Our methodology got better over time, so we could find more cases. But if you look at 2015 to 2020, which is the last five years on record, la, it shows an increase of 20%. With um like with each year they're just just dropping more so than the previous year. So um this goes to show it's not so much like um so like in, in, in 2015 there was um about four five five, then it dropped to four eight, then four three four, then three one three, then three three two, then two six one and so on and so forth. So it actually has dropped quite a bit just during these last five years in terms of this kind of STD and STI rates, right? Um, which leads me to believe that it's probably education, condom use, and careful sex behavior that lead to the viruses dropping and not the prostitutes. Like, because prostitutes has been legalized since forever, yeah. right? Yeah, education definitely a, a huge part of, uh, you know, uh, the prevention of uh, spread of unwanted uh, viruses, la, or STDs and whatnot. And also as a culture, I, I think we are more liberal, mm. like sexually. For example, uh, 2005, they interviewed Singaporeans, right? About 68.6% um, of them expressed negative attitudes towards gays, lesbian, trans. 22 had positive and 8% were neutral. In 2010, that figure, 64%, um, now held negative views. So it dropped by 4%. And then 25.3% had positive views of gay, trans, and all that, which rose about 3%. And then 10.2% were, were neutral. They, they didn't really have a take. So you, you can see the slight shift of like acceptance towards them, the liberalization of like our culture. Um, Pink Dot has also had like a recent increase in participants. They had like 26,000 last year. Uh, for their turnout, which is like, sorry, not last year because COVID, I mean 2019, right? Which is 10 times the amount when they started out in 2009. So gays also have a lot more sex with different partners and, and they do anal, which increases like HIV risk. So this, this tells us that the, that the data su supports the case that education, condom use, you know, using your PrEP, uh, which is a medicine for H HIV prevention and also more careful behaviors can actually impact your virus which not so much like having gays around or not so much having prostitutions yeah for sure for sure right okay so yeah. if you guys mm -hmm. agreed um don do, do you have any thoughts on that or shall i post another question as well no man go with the next question okay so to me right um there's no such thing as a proper job 
but a lot of people see this as like very sus you know they they don't like the way our society is heading and like okay so if let's say the hiv rates and the aids rates and everything else right it's not affected by only fans they're not affected by prostitutes okay and and there's no rape crimes or whatever what kind of society are we trying to target for are we trying aim so are we trying to normalize like everyone should just you know take pictures of the backside and, and sell for five dollars and ten dollars is there such a thing as a normal job or proper job like what do you guys think Could you repeat that again, man? Yeah, so I was saying that probably right now, right, they cannot say that it causes more harm through sexual assaults or rape or STDs or whatever, but it can cause harm through like what kind of society are we going to normalize? What about the outlook for our children? You know, if we normalize this kind of sex work, right, then what are we just going to accept that it's okay that our kids are going to sell their backside online or sell their backside in real life, blah, blah, blah. Because it's not a proper job. And if it's not a proper job, we shouldn't legalize it, we shouldn't normalize it, we shouldn't make it moral or, or we should see it as immoral. But is there such a thing as a proper job though? Like, what do you guys think? Uh, as a millennial, I speak for myself. There is no such thing as a proper job, right? Mm. But the older generations in Singapore they have this notion of having a proper job, you know? Yeah, so they would not consider this OnlyFans as a proper job, a YouTuber as a proper job, a, a content creator online as a proper job. Mm. These are not proper jobs for them. Even as someone doing podcasts for a living, it's not a proper job. Yeah. What is considered a proper job is someone who goes to the office, or even though it's not office, the work has to start at a certain timing in the morning period and then ends in the evening period. That's a proper job. Even working at night, it's not considered a proper job. Yeah. So it depends on the generation. And as for Singapore, we have more older folks here than younger folks now. So... Yeah. So, um, yeah. Hmm. That's my that's my take on it. Yeah, I, I definitely right. So I think the idea of proper job, I mean, that's definitely always going to change with time. Uh, right, what's considered proper, uh, quote unquote, uh, in one era would definitely change, and you know maybe obsolete in one, in another, uh, you know, as the years go by. Uh, but again, so the idea of you know, uh, you know. Okay, so I like to see the the the, uh, the difference between, you know, the actual sex work, meaning you know you sell a backside, literally, you know, uh, you know, come, you know, the sex workers and things like. That. So I think that's that's I, I still see that as different from let's say, you know, uh, pornography in itself. So the question now here is, what if people are selling, you know, their their uh, their you know their obscene materials. If it's theirs, then I, I don't know. I, I got, uh, you know, if it's theirs, then then it's theirs. But if it's, you know, if it's the uh, an image of another person's, you know, ass or, or, or vagina or whatever, right? Without consent. Then, or... Yeah, or with consent even, right? Oh. Uh, okay, not for me. Okay, but again, I think the society <laughs> is not ready yet, right? Society is not ready for that. And it's not so much about whether it's proper or not, but it's whether it's moral or not. And I think one of the reasons why uh, government hasn't actually repealed uh, 377A as well, because I, I think at least from the government, you know, uh, what they claim is that generally on the ground, you know, uh, whether we like it or not, sentiments say public is not ready on the whole. Mm. Will time change? I, I think it will, right? Uh, so because in fact most of the people who are more open minded who are more uh, accepting are the younger people so as as you know as the years go by i think definitely we will eventually see 377a being repealed and the selling of you know uh, obscene materials will be more you know uh, okay right so it's not so much about proper or proper what, but what uh what's considered morally okay or not right so i think so if they don't see hey like yeah that's fine no it's not morally wrong uh, you know, you want to sell a picture of your backside, you know, people want to enjoy it, yeah, so be it, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, people take pleasure in it. Yeah, go ahead. Why you keep using the term but... backside, man? <laughs> no, but like, okay, I agree with you guys. Like, uh, I also don't think there's like anything is a proper job. All jobs require you to like exhaust your physical and mental efforts, but just to different capacities, right? I can argue that it's also more freeing to do this kind of uh, freelance, just take picture of your backside content creation because no fucker is asking me to get work on time, take the morning bus, travel with the crowd, adjust my lunch time, ask me to do OT and I have to adjust the way how I speak and act during 9 to 5. I feel very censored and very container. But should we accept this as a society? To me, it's um, on a personal note and not on society's um, sort of perception. To me, it's like, why not, you know? It's not like ever since they legalized prostitutes, then suddenly we all became like 10 times hornier and, and just went out to like rip all the prostitutes in the world, right? Um, but there are markets for them, you know, like what Don was saying, you know, for incels, pedophiles, creeps, ugly people who cannot get laid, right? People who want or need affection, for example, etc., etc. There is a, a demand. That's why he's able to sell so much, you know? Where is he getting all his money from? Yeah. It cannot be from good-looking people who can get a girlfriend outside or can get a boyfriend outside, right? It's also better for these like things to exist for potential psychopaths or sex predators who cannot find a way to change but just need a legal outlet to release their inner urges and desires safely so that they don't do it on a random stranger. Um, if you don't want to like have it or, or, or you know sort of partake in it, then good. Just stay away. It won't affect you. I don't really see how if you if you're against it and you don't go look for a prostitute, how this would impact you anyway. But don't like restrict a necessary income source for some who needs to feed their family lah, and have that freedom. Yeah, on that note, I have to, uh, I mean, I would uh, have to disagree with you mm. uh, in the sense that because it's, you know, the implication. So, so if let's say, because now research have also shown, the, again, like I said, uh, some of the repercussions of uh, pornography, for example, right? Uh, and there are, you know, it, it impacts your, your uh, cognitive ability or capacity and things like that, right? Uh, these are, research, you know, research have been done on, 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 on this. So if, if there are people who truly believe, hey, look, you know, I'm on this side where, you know, it actually impacts people's behavior, people's uh, mindset and attitude even, right? Uh, then I wouldn't want uh, such a thing to be rampant because while I may not accept it, you know, yeah, that's fine. But what if, you know, there are other people who accept it and this becomes normalized and then, you know, again, in my mind, uh, whether rightly or, 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 or inappropriately or, or unfoundedly, right? So in my mind, I, has, I still have this perception that, uh, not me, uh, when I say I am, I'm just playing a role here. Uh, you know, th- there's going to be, you know, people out there with a certain attitude, you know, who, who are just, you know, uh, addicted, for example, right? Uh, yeah, to pornography, and then and then what what is the impact on on that? So once they they can't get enough of pornography and they move on to other things, they want to move on to other things. Uh, yeah. So so I I, I think it, the impact on, on that is not just on a personal level, but it's beyond that. So it's not just about you know uh, people earning money and then yeah. If it if the impact is you know on a personal level no then then fine but if there there is impact on society then I think we need to think about that more carefully I guess. Okay. Um. I I think I know what you're talking about. Like for example, if I go under like no fab kind of circles, right? They will also promote this kind of thing where they they say pornography is addictive, is damaging to your brain. Uh, it causes you to sort of like be. Uh, less physical, and then you know, it, it ruins your drive, your motivation, blah 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 blah. Are you are you talking about those kind of research or what kind of research? Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess yeah. Okay, because um, the no fat founder, uh, the guy who basically started all this thing and found out all these kind of studies, right? Um, he is kind of misusing the science a bit, right? Because those are the things that they found after a session, right? That the hormones like prolactin, where you masturbate. And then after you ejaculate, those are the kind of things that make you sleepy, make you so on and so forth, like, right? And then there's a tendency to be addicted to it. Okay, uh, that one hasn't really been strongly established yet because like technically you can be addicted to anything, right? Like for example, mm. I also used to be one who was partaking in these kind of activities, but I'm not an addict. Like I don't see myself being an addict. 
I don't find it addictive. I only find it as like when I want it or when I feel like it, I'll, I'll do it. But obviously, we can't just look at my good example um, and say that, okay, then therefore it's not addictive. Uh, for some, I'm sure there's probably people who are genetically more inclined to these kind of things or addictive behaviors, right? There's something in their brain that uh, they have a very impulsive personality where they enjoy something, they will keep on doing it. That's why we affect people. That's why we have uh, people who are addicted to different kind of weird things. Okay, fair, right? But then to generalize it and to say that porn is addictive or porn is bad for you, is, is, is there's, there's no real science behind it. He, he also went even further because he believes so much in his own research, right? That he is actually suing a neuroscientist now. Because this neuroscientist came out to criticize his movement. He said that, um, it's based off pseudoscience. Um, all of the effects that he's talking about, right? Some is not true. And some that is true, is only seen after you ejaculate. But there's no long-term to medium-term effects on it. And then I believe, I'm not sure about the court hearing, right? But I think the scientists may have won uh, because um, based on the current evidence that's out there. Because I think he sued him in about 2019 and I haven't heard anything from this founder. Uh, he went off like the grid for quite a while. So, I mean, if he won the case, he probably would have posted it everywhere. So to kind of like say this is a definite bet, right? It's, it's, it's still quite debatable, especially if, like from, from people who, who know more than me, like, for like, for example, for this neuroscientist who kind of comes up to say that actually porn is not that bad for you or it's not even bad for you. It can be healthy for you sometimes, you know? Like for example, um, Frequent ejaculation has have been shown to reduce prostate cancer, blah, 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 blah you know? So it, it, it already depends on how it affects you personally. Like, it, it, you can say the same with everything, right? Fast food also can be bad for you. But then, if you're not addicted to it, why will you ban it, you know? You, it can serve as a, a, a good relief for me when I want to have a cheat day. Um, smoking is also bad for you. Should, should, should we ban it, blah, 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 blah. Things that can be bad for you may not necessarily be bad for you, if, if that makes sense but you should still ultimately have that freedom. That's just what I feel. Uh. Yeah, uh, for, for sure, right? Yeah, so there are a lot of other things that are addictive as well. Uh, sugar, for example, you were saying mm. about fast food. and Yeah, so sugar, I think definitely that's one uh, that's been coming up, uh, or rather came up for quite a while. Then we're talking about how to mitigate that uh, issue here in Singapore at least. All right, Don, any last thoughts? Any last words? Uh, no, man. I'm good. Okay. See, uh, anything else to that? Yeah, yeah, just unfortunately, no matter how many things that we debunk on this podcast or the data that we have, right? Like, I would like to build upon what you guys say. Like, it, it won't really matter because it just comes down to what society perceives, right? So people are not going to vote in favor of these kind of progressive things because they rather seek comfort in their bubble and not be threatened by change in their daily lives. Like, IPS conducted a survey this year finding that although Singaporeans are becoming more liberal, right, we as a whole are still very conservative. Things like divorce and euthanasia are okay, but sexual issues, transgender, all that, no. They found that in the survey, 68.3% of respondents said that prostitution was never or seldom justifiable. 67.3% said that sex, casual sex is also not good. 60.3% say abortion is also not good. 59.3% say homosexuality is also not good. 57.2% said parents shouldn't, uh, uh, um, so, sorry, 57.2% say parents should continue hitting their child even in 2021. And over a quarter agreed that um, homosexual partners were just as good as other couples. So, and this is in comparison to like other countries. Uh, in, in, J- in Japan, they find like 56.9. In Hong Kong, they find 51.5. And in Malaysia, um, 20.9. So, uh, we, we are still more a bit more progressive than Malaysia in, in terms of thinking, like, I guess, when it comes to homosexuals, but we are still quite packed back in that sort of mentality. Lah. Um, I guess, like, things like death penalty and euthanasia, they, they saw more than 50% agreement or so. Um, and pre- but now, the, the main sort of things that kind of shifted over to being more positive is, like, premarital sex that um, sex uh, like before marriage should be fine, you know, and divorce. That's one of the biggest things that Singapore's have been changing in their mindsets. But these kind of like gender, sexuality kind of issues, right, are still very, very ancient, I would say. Therefore, you know, I only do what I can and I can only say what I say. Like the viewers are the ones that have to make up that leap and inform the decision on their own. But that's just all for me. 
All right. Thank you, Sim. Okay. With that, uh, right, we have come to the end of today's uh, talk on, uh, you know, whether sharing of uh, obscene materials should could should be banned. Should you know? Should we allow it to continue? Should we, should it be okay for people to use it as uh, as a so, as a means of income? All right. Uh, to some say, hey, look, there's nothing wrong. You know, it's 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 a private matter altogether. The government shouldn't intervene. What's wrong? You know, it's it's between consent, uh, consenting adults. To others, it's uh, more of a moral issue, moral argument, and you know, there's a whole uh, other issue. Uh, issues that intertwine with this uh, topic here today. So we talked about that for a bit. All right. Uh, you no, know, Sim, I think you summed it up uh, very well about, oops, uh, you seem, you summed uh, the, today's discussion well uh, with regard to, you know, what science says, what people say, you know, what the government say and, and things like that. We all have our own agendas. All right. And I think at the end of the day, we have to be, you know, uh, people who have, uh, who are able to think critically and uh, you know, don't take you know uh, any information out there uh, without thinking critically. All right. So anyway, yeah, uh, that's it for this session. Goodbye. Union's last session. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.